Well, when I was there, my grandmother had turned it into a confectionery store. Hmm. We had a little bit of groceries, but it was more ice cream. There was um, the big kind of ice cream cooler. I made a lot of ice cream cones, sometimes double dips hmm. if they had more money than the dime it was going to cost them for ice cream. One whole side of the store was magazines. So <clears throat> I did a lot of everyday Valley News would come and I'd put out new magazines and take out the old ones. And I suppose that's why I'm a reader to this day. I love to read. When we weren't busy, I'd sit there and read magazines. And so, um, yeah, we had comic books. We had um, uh, sports magazines. We had uh, a lot of the westerns and uh, murder mysteries, as well as look, Life, Collier's, uh, you know, the Hollywood type of magazines. <clears throat> it was fun to wait on people because you kind of got to know what their taste sure. was. We also had the post office. Now, back in those days, the post office had sites, well, sort of like you'd find a day at hy Vee and go in and buy stamps, only, um, you know, my grandmother had an old scale, and uh, she sold stamps and she'd weigh packages, and they would go all over the country. I could never go back behind the counter where the post office was. Only she could do that because she was the postmistress for the north end gotcha. of town. Uh, some of those people still talked German. My, my grandmother, who went to school in the United States and was born here, could speak some German because her parents did at home, and they both came from Germany. <clears throat> so um, if she wanted to say something and didn't want me to know it to somebody, I'd occasionally hear her speak German. And one of her friends was Bill Pay, Ben Pay's son, and he would come in now, she had a beer license, and she'd keep it in this big refrigerator we had. I think the only reason she had the beer license was she always liked the beer at night before she'd go to bed. But she and Bill Pay would sit back there and tell stories. Some of them, I think, were dirty stories. And they'd laugh, but they were speaking German, so I never got to hear any of those. Um, <clears throat> Interesting people came in. I remember um, Coughlin. Right now I can't think of his first name, but one of the Coughlin boys was deaf and blind. Hmm. And they lived on 2nd Street around the corner from the store. And he would come with his white cane tapping down the street. And <clears throat> because he was so hard of hearing, he also had an ear trumpet. So my grandmother would take the ear trumpet, <clears throat> put it in his ear, and say, What do you want today, Bob? And he would say, um, an ice cream cone or a malt or something like that. And we'd make it up, and he'd sit there at the little counter, and then he'd tap his way back home again. Hmm. I never knew <clears throat> when I knew him that later on I would be working for the Society for the Blind, and, of course, things were much more advanced mm -hmm. 20 years later than they were when, when I was working in the store. Other people that lived on that end of town were the beer bowers, and my grandmother pointed out where their original house was, just on North Front. Um, <clears throat> across the street, Weggie's Candy Company mm -hmm. uh, was in the building, I think it's the Eagles now, but there were windows in the front, and I could cross the street and go over there and watch the, <clears throat> the women in the windows dipping the chocolates and setting them aside and dipping the chocolates. It was all hand done. Um, <clears throat> later on, that was, a, I think it was the Crown Bottling Company. Okay. And so you could stand in front of the windows and see the bottles come around the belt and the caps go on the bottles. Well, the kids on the north end they had a lot of things to watch <clears throat> and see um, right around our store. There were some poor kids, too, that lived down riverfront, um, by the riverfront. 
And um, they would come in the store and they were so raggedy. And I know a couple of times I saw my grandma slip them extra candy from the candy counter. In front of the magazine rack was this huge candy counter with the glass front. When I think back today, I hated that candy counter. Everybody would come in with their pennies and want penny candy, and they put their nose on the glass, and I must have cleaned that glass 20 times a day. But the candy was really a lot for a penny or two, and so it was fun to wait on the kids that would come in. I mentioned where the Riverfront Park is today. I nearly got hysterical with laughter when I heard that was going to be a park because early on in Mankato, that was the dump. And my dad used to go down there with his rifle when he was young and shoot the rats in the park. And now it's very nice, mm -hmm. it's Riverfront Park. He would have laughed too if he ever thought that was going to be a city park. Well, let's see, what else would you like to know? I, I think one thing, if you're at the corner of Rock and Front. Stand in front of our old building and look down the street. The stores all line up in a row, and then our old store that was in our family 113 years juts out because it was the first one there and the street was narrower. Oh. And so as they gradually widened out the street, if you look at that corner, you can hardly walk around the building because it's, um, you know, it's been there a long time.